Hello and welcome to this continuing live code series. We're creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. In this session, we're going to continue the work building a site wide search for the Western Friend website. Currently, we've got our search page uh, pretty much completed. It takes a query and you can pass in by the URL. And it displays multiple types of content with their own custom templates more or less. There's no way right now to get to the search page aside from knowing the URL structure. So to round out this pull request in this initial issue. I'm just going to add a quick search menu to the nav bar and if necessary I might have to create a hamburger menu there. Oops, what's this? So how do I... Chromium. So it's not the right... Uh, dev tools mobile. Okay, so the hamburger menu is already there. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the bootstrap docs. And essentially, here's an example of a nav bar with an embedded form. And uh, apologies for the uh, my noisy neighbors, the Lokit. There's a they're in uh, they're hatching their babies now. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially, they have to get very territorial at this time of year. And I want to keep my window open so it's cool in here. <clears throat> Let's get some tea. Some iced tea this time. All right, so we've got an example of a form here. It's just a couple, you know, lines of HTML with bootstrap classes. When we look at our search page, where we've been working, just to get essentially the action. So let's paste this into the menu first. Oops, didn't get quite highlighted all. Right. Grab that. So we got search open, and let's grab our nav bar, which is in our. Main app navbar.html. And I think we're going to put it over here. I'm considering removing this little welcome message. I don't know how useful it is. Uh, I won't log in over here, but um, just to save space, we might not need it. So I believe it'll be right here. And I don't know if I needed to put it in a list item. I think so, but let's double check. Let's see what happens. Okay. They actually do it outside of the UL. Hmm, interesting. So maybe I'll do that. Let's see how this would work. Uh, we would... Didn't have the nav bar collapse. I'm going to put it at the front. See how it looks. It's kind of annoying how when I paste the code it so there's indentation problems. I think that the IDE would be able to solve those. Okay, first thing is not collapsing. At this. Uh, 
uh, breakpoint. I'm going to take a look at it here without the welcome message, but I think this is not going to work very well anyway. So it's got to be a form inline. Why is theirs render so nicely and mine just renders horribly? Just because it's not collapsed. might just do it without the search button. For some reason, it's just not working. The full screen it is, but then you probably can't see this. It overlaps the uh, slogan, so that's not cool. What else is different here? Nav bar, nav, ML auto, margin left auto. Forms just. I mean, I just scrolled past it. Hey, what's up, Morph Breed? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's pretty warm here. Having just a bit of trouble fitting this form into the navigation menu. Something's got to give, I don't know. Make it a little bit smaller. What have you been up to, Morph Breed? Are you working on any th projects today? Doing any streaming? Okay. <laughs> My 
might be cool. Might be a fun thing to do sometime. All right. I'm not sure how helpful these uh, this is, but uh, just splitting it out. Now it looked like if I just paste this in there, it's just gonna have any effect. Let's take a look. Input group. They put the input right there. So I would do this. Did I cut the right thing? Yeah, they're input. Input group text. I think I missed something up. Okay, so that's from the previous. Input group. Take a look how this fits into the, the form. Good grief. This indentation is getting a little bit annoying. But this needs to go in one. This can go there. There we go. Is that bird annoying? I can uh, close my window if it is. It's something that's a little annoying to me. But uh, VS Code, do I know the VS Code plugin Prettier formats your code? It's pretty nice. Yeah, Prettier is for JavaScript. <coughs> for Python, uh, you use uh, PyLint or I'm using Black. And one problem I have here is um, so I'm writing HTML more or less. So prettier and black aren't gonna do. Hey, that's not too bad. Uh, they're not gonna do HTML. And <laughs> to further complicate it, uh, this is actually Django specific HTML. There's um, so the code formatting has a little bit of troubles knowing when, when to apply the rules. And it's just a little bit of a mess. Uh, it might, but I think it just doesn't know that this is HTML. If I just do this though, let's see. HTML, and I say, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it did, but then it, yeah, it worked. <laughs> but my spaces are set to four, and prettier kicked in right here, yeah. I don't know if I'm ready to go to two spaces. <laughs> At least not in this primarily. Python Django project, let me think on that for a second. I mean, I'm not really strongly uh, stuck on four spaces by any means. In Python, certainly. Not my HTML. Yeah, I wonder if I can specify that pretty or Okay, so I would just uh Start out HTML or something. Could try that. Let's see. Well, yeah, I, I don't quite have enough project metadata in my root, so let's go ahead and add some more of that. Mm. 
<clears throat> hmm. I kind of like Yammo. But I don't know. Dun, 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 dun. Start out HTML. Options. Tab width. Four. What's the uh, trailing comma ES5? I've seen that one before. Whoa. No, no, no. What's semi? Semi is false. Let me just delete it. Why isn't this? Oh yeah, yeah, semi. Right, I like semicolon. That's right. Why is this not passing lint? Pretty or not happy. Expected a JSON object. Literal, okay. Yeah, prettier. You know, I will just do Jason. Why can't I do YAML? Is this an old error or something? Be able to get rid of that, and then there's tab width, right? It's not going to convert my spaces to tabs, is it? I think this is just an old error. I could have used the YAML. Anyway, let's see now. <gasps> Save. Control A S. Prettier. Format. Document. There are multiple formatters for HTML. Selected default. Oh, nice. Prettier. Control Shift. Format. Huh. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Did I? Oh, let's start out HTML. Yes, okay. Yeah, thank you, Morph Breed. Always. Muy helpful. Uh, I'm just wondering if this will work. If I, for example, format, control shift I. So there's no formatter for Django HTML files. Install formatter. Yeah, so I have to manually. Just say that it's HTML. I'm cool with that. Just all have to remember. <clears throat> okay, now where were we? Prettier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking good. Not too bad. Might not even need this little icon. I think it's just 
junk. In which case I'll just go to, or sort of like chart junk kind of a thing. It's not really adding any much to the usability of it. All right, still takes up a lot of space. Is it possible to put a bootstrap button here so that people can still have something to click on? Or do they just have to use enter? And then people with screen readers, I reckon, would be submitting it. Or other assistive devices would be, if they can type to the device, then they could still submit this form. I'm just wondering if a button is necessary. So I kind of like this, having the button right there. Yeah, I did have it on format on save. I disabled it at one point. I can't remember why. What's something? Oh, I was working on a different project, I think. That's, um, it wasn't adopting black or prettier. So, oh, now my Emmet will work. That's cool. Preferences, okay, oops, wrong button. Preferences, settings. What is that under? Uh, hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was there. Actually, yeah, uh, I just, was, so when I hit control S, it does it, yeah. For some reason, I just kept doing the format document. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> yeah, cool. Oh, they do have button add-ons. Okay, that solves it. Just have a button add-on. The second one. I like the buttons on the right. <clears throat> So we have the form with buttons. Oh, nice. this basic add-on to come from the aria described by prepend basic add-on one Not too bad. For some reason, it seems a little offset from the rest of the stuff, though. What's going on there? Well, I'm not going to fight it too much. I want to just... try to get this basic thing working. So the other aspect of it 
is to tell the form what action and I'll need a name Yeah, and it's already using a previous searches, so that's good. And let's see, I'm already on the search, so. Okay, that didn't work. Hey, what's up, dinner? Welcome back. Where am I coding? That makes me sound like I'm in the Amazon. I'm actually in F Finland, but yeah, it sounds like I'm in. <laughs> Got a water fall in the background and wild animals. <laughs> I just have my window open. I live by a uh, kind of a community park. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that works. So the actual submit works, but the button's not tied up to submit. So yeah, that's just, where's my button? Uh, type submit, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Good. And I think everything else is working. So if I do Dan, and there it is. There's my search. I just wanted to tie up this little bit of a loose end and um, kind of get some feedback on this whole search feature. What is this basic add-on? Where's that coming from? Control F. Only one instance of that. Here, I'll delete that. What did you get up to dinner? What time is it there, where you're at? It's 10.40 here, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that's in the morning. I was like, that's pretty, pretty early. So as you can see here, uh, I did work a little bit after After the session where you joined me, I got some basic templates going on to show different content types. It's basic, you know, it's good proof of concept. I'm ready to roll. And the uh, rest of the session, you'll notice some garbage or some gibberish down here. Uh, I'm going to come back to this faceted search in the library and um, make it so you can filter by uh, authors. And I, I worked it out. I did a little bit of an experiment off stream, so we'll, we'll go ahead and continue that. So I'll just uh, go ahead and commit this. Got our prettier setup, so let's add that. <laughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> sorry. Dinner says, I've been trying to relearn some C++ today. My C++ knowledge is about 20 years old, out of date. Oh, okay, cool. Have you ever worked with uh, the Qt framework by chance? I'd like to. I haven't got a reason to, though. That's another thing. 
I'm in I'm so deep in web development land that you know JavaScript and I'm uh, is my main tool and language but I, I'm enjoying Python and Django and Wagtail certainly it's been quite productive with this all right so we've got that committed oops what did I press I clicked something I dragged oh, okay that's not what I was trying to do so issue number 110 mm, did a little bit of work today rebase and merge delete Go master update. Okay, so the cool search page is done. I'm glad for that. It worked out pretty good. Now it looks like we're still running. I still have the search. So this fasted search allows people to refine the library items uh, to find the, whatever they're looking for. I'm not sure exactly how useful some of these categories are or how often they're used in general, uh, but we're pretty sure that people want to filter by author, which is kind of already possible because we have uh, this author page. but. Uh, on the author page, it shows library items, and it's supposed to also show uh, articles from the magazine. And in this context, we just want library items. So in any case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, work through. I've got my notes. I already believe this should be straightforward. What I'm going to do is create a, another facet select. I'm going to populate it with authors, but only those authors who have um, been attributed to a library item. So just for a little bit of context, if you haven't seen some of the other sessions, because there's like a lot of these sessions, so I don't, wouldn't be surprising. Um, our authors come from our contacts list and basically people, meetings and organ organizations can all, that was my, something falling out of my window, sorry about the noise. Uh, but all of these entities can author an article or a, a library item. The, the bears are writing. Yeah. <laughs> they smell. I got some of these um, meatless hamburgers earlier that were <laughs> I can't remember the brand that kind of advertises juicy. Maybe the bears smell those. They're actually surprisingly good. <laughs> I think we're getting some pretty yummy uh, vegetable proteins alternatives to our like you know traditional red meat and and things like that they have this one called like amazing burger or something that's really getting popular in the United States <laughs> I'm trying to just cut back my meat intake in general for health and other you know reasons sustainability so when we add like a library item, I need to add a menu item here. So let's go ahead and create a branch. And well, let's just all probably be just as fast to uh, to do this and explain it as I go. All right, cool. <laughs> so these facets basically are ways, you know, we let the user, we categorize data and let people refine their searches. Morph Breed says, there's a funny video on YouTube where a bear picks up the garbage of a Finnish guy and the Finnish guy yelled out the window and the bear fell backwards because he was so scared. <laughs> That's pretty cool.
Man, he had this menu item to get the library items. But in any case, uh, library items. Yeah, if you want to, feel free to post that into the chat. I, I won't stream it on. Uh, yeah, I won't show it on the stream. But yeah, more free if you find that one. So basically, there it is. Um, from here, I can add child pages, which are library items. The main reason I'm showing this is then I'll say new library item. Because I'll actually need a few of these. And then you select an author. And it has to be a person or an organization. Or a meeting. Give it a publication date. That is annoying. And you have to have something in the body. And then you've categorized it into these facets. Which for the most part, this is a key thing. Are one, are many to one? I don't know, basically you only select one option. But these are topics, for example, are many to many. And authors, as you see up here, are many to many. And the way I implemented authors is using this thing called an orderable because you can change the order. This is a really cool thing that Wagtail adds. Really nice. Topics also use the orderable. So we will publish that. Just Wagtail out of the box. Good stuff. Now we've got some, uh, at least three library items. We can check it out. We can see the library items that have been published by Ben Loman, Quaker Center, the ones that are appropriate for these grades. So we have actually pages that will that will pretty much do the same function as this faceted search. But anyway, this is the way we're doing it. So this is where I'm at. Now I'm going to add this facet over here. Let's check out the code for the library. And... Uh, Place to start. First, we have to grab the model. And if I go, how did I do this fast? Search. I got to think about this for a second. The library in index page. This is the library index page. So we have a. I'll just go through this file because we're going to be seeing a lot, and I'll give it a high level overview real quick. The library item represents just one of these, and they have these fields that you saw me filling in a minute ago audience, genre, medium, so there, that's that. Library item author is this orderable thing that allows me to do a many-to-many -many relationship. Oh yeah, and this is the index page in any case. Um, and change the order of them. So it's many-to-many -many library item and author. It's like a join table or whatever that would be called. You know, basically they're both foreign keys, but one is a parent-child relationship. So, and then the topics is also an orderable. Now, here's where we're at: library item index. And the reason all this matters is because this is where most of the complexity is. And I think Morphbreed, you were here and helping me actually work through this uh, context where we prepare the the data to pass back into the template. I don't have pagination right yet, but work on that in a little bit. You help with the JavaScript part. Okay, but I thought you were also here when I was, okay. Yeah, it's hard for me to keep track of it. No, I didn't mean offense by that. But yeah, that's right. That JavaScript uh, turned out pretty nice. I was pretty, I was proud of that. I was telling Mary how um, concise we got that. <coughs> Mary is the editor of Western Friend. All right, cool. So what we're going to do, and I might end up moving this to the end of the function for some reason. Yeah, I'll show that real quick now because we're also going to look at the library index page template. And basically, if there's some library items, like, you know, you haven't filtered it down to where there's no items found. Uh, I also need to make it so you can clear the filters. But anyway, I'll put a little button there or something that just takes you to the library. But in any case, I can just click that too. Um, 
it iterates over each of them, each of the library items. And showing the authors and stuff. And this is the magic bit. Look at this. Like mm, 15 lines of JavaScript. Or, yeah. So basically, we're grabbing these parameters. And this isn't reactive or anything like that. These are actually making GET requests. I'm cool with that. And it's splitting them out into these search facets. And one thing we did is define these search facets so they actually match the Django, I'm trying to think here, query set filter key. So this will come back up later. This is actually, actually exactly what we pass. More or less this whole thing gets passed straight into the, to the back end here. These are the filter keys. So very few moving parts. And so for each of these, you know, we check if it's in the URL because you don't always fast it by everything. But in, in this case, this is our master list. And for each of those, if, if it is in the URL, what I had to do here is this was to set the value to match it so that they stay in sync after the get request these were getting reset other than that that's all we needed this for I believe hmm. just to keep these in sync now if I was using something like view and I had considered putting view into this uh, it would be more code in 30 and 20 K just for the dependency uh, but it would be a little more declarative but in any case I'm happy with 15 lines of code so that these are kept in sync more or less. Well, see, it's not reactive if I change the URL. It's not updating that. But people don't typically do that. They might be more prone to share URL. All right, so back in models, essentially what happens is when it gets that get request, um, we prepare some context to get these values here. So I'm going to add another one for authors. Then we handle the query. And we filter out any keys that aren't allowed so that people can't pass just arbitrary stuff in. Right, because that was actually thrown in error. Um, but that's about it. And then we filter it. We just this is the cool part and it took us a while but it was like a team effort this allowed let's see what are we doing here facet so we're constructing a dict here we're filtering out any of the we're getting the query dict and we're filtering out any of the keys and then we're making a new one using only those loud keys where there's a value and we're unpacking that into this Django filter so this is why it was uh, I thought pretty cool and clean to actually have from the front end in the HTML use this filter. You know, we're looking for the field item audience and we're traversing that relationship and, and checking the title in the related document, intergenerational. Uh, just with with that. So it's pretty pretty cool. And I hope I can keep keep this code around. I hope this um, faceted library kind of stays with this implementation. It, seems, it feels really maintainable to me. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, do the same thing. So context authors. And I, I think this is a two-liner though. Let me check my notes here. So I showed a minute ago there's this intermediary table library item authors. It's this orderable table, and it's what kind of joins the library item with the author because it's a many to many relationship. So, first, I have to um, prepare a list of authors. Uh, 
Alright. So, did this off stream a little bit in the console. It's all down here, but it was just easier for me to put it into a notepad real quick. So, these are essentially what this is doing is getting me all those objects, all these intermediary objects. <clears throat> so, each of these objects references one of each. So it's any time a library item has been related to an author. Because what I'm trying to do here is zero in on just the authors that have written a library item. So this is the way to do it. So library item authors. Then the next part is to actually filter out the users. And I'll just copy and paste this in here too. So let's see if black formats that a little bit better. So it's readable. All right, so we got essentially not using this yet. And huh. this is probably incorrect. Maybe this linter doesn't see that it's inheriting from orderable, but when I did this in the it worked so there it is these are all the it's a query set of all the library item authors and so that does work so then I just want the list of authors though so everything I've been really trying to be consistent and inherit everything possible from the wagtail page except in cases where you know there were like relationships involved or something so library items are inheriting from page and just you can take my word from it that these uh, authors are all the contacts are pages and what we do here is we essentially we have this list now of library item authors so I use and this I need to put in the um, let me think for a second I probably don't even need to do that I just need to get this list in, and then I could probably just do this in fact. Maybe it was more readable. Not sure, but in any case, so we're going to filter the page objects. Um, and I'll show you why this is written in such a way. We have these reverse relationships. So from library item, table there's this reverse relationship called authors that gets me into this collection and from the contacts table there's a reverse relationship called library items authored and both of these inherit from the page so I can just basically use these reverse relationships directly from the wagtail page so this is it took me a couple days to figure this out so it's not simple stuff not obvious but it's just getting familiar with the internals of wagtail and Django guess makes it more intuitive so essentially we're just using this we're seeing that library items authored and we're using the in to check that there's membership in this list that I had prepared right here and we're getting to distinct values my assumption here is that for example oh crap I broke some good stuff There we go, sorry. Um, since, uh, let's see, well, I don't have an example, but for instance, if I had uh, an author that had authored multiple of these, they would come into the list multiple times. All right, cool, so uh, let's uh, get these into the UI to see how on spot this is. So our context now has this author's 
list. So now if we hop over to template, and essentially I'll put the authors up top. And it's a form group. Audience. So there's two things I want to do here. One is just get this code to work. And then two, I'll add a little JavaScript library to this select so that we can do um, a little bit of filtering. Let's see if this works though. If I get that far, I'll be glad. Yeah, so there's our authors and it limits them again just to the ones who have published something here. Very cool. Because again, if I go to our contacts, we have several people and if I publish them, I don't want that person, another person to show up in the list if they haven't actually published anything in the library. So we had to do that two step process. First, get a list of all the library item authors, then filter down a list of the actual entities, supply them to the front end, and now we can uh, see if I can pass it back into the query. Because the second part, which I've already worked out, is how to filter it. So you don't have to watch me fiddle too much. Essentially, the name of this is not audience. It is going to. So, again, this is the field name right here. And these double underscores means go across the relationship and look for this field in that relationship. And if you recall, I've got two relationships I have to go across. From the lab, so starting from the library item, from the library item, it's a little bit mind boggling. I will cross the author's bridge and end up in library item author land. Boink. From library item author land, I will cross the library, uh, wait a minute, I will cross the author bridge because I'm already here. When you're here, you, the outbound traffic can go out on these fields, but the inbound traffic has to come in on the reverse relationships. Ah, so that's why I get my little spaghetti brain in a knot, <clears throat> but it works uh, when you just are very careful. So here's the bridges. We're crossing the author's bridge, then gonna cross the author bridge and look for the title field, right? And the title is just this. It automatically renders the stringified view. So I think uh, make sure I got stuff going on there. This form submit. And I'm, I'm thinking about I have this on change event scattered through here. I might just move that uh, into here somehow. Just attach the event to all of the select items in one line of code might be cleaner morph breed if you're still in the chat you got any suggestion on how i guess just jquery jquery is already here i would just uh, grab all of the all these select options and do an on change callback i guess and just put this in the on change i reckon or is there a, is there a way to do that without jquery that's pretty concise Oh, okay, so I hadn't saved this. Let's now see what happens when I save it. When I go to the library and I fasten by the author, author's author title, yeah. Um, so, for what's worth, I've got this on change event that's on all of these select. Yeah, basically submit the form 
if I change one because uh, mm, yeah when these are there's no value here it doesn't it does it's not some it's not really submitting them all it's just submitting the ones that have a value uh, sort of what's going on here let's go do Shiri. Mm, okay yeah that's the only problem here is so you can see how this keeps getting reset on the git because I don't have it wired up down here so I fixed that real quick I just added this field and that the JavaScript doesn't know to populate the value mm, author in single quotes but now when I submit it it sticks around and it updates that thing so yeah basically what would be like a couple liner or a way to make this a little cleaner whenever one of the any of these select is modified submit the form so move all these into one or two lines in here just food for thought but I'm gonna handle that in a minute I need to first get this filtering working so the filtering part goes here the allowed keys are here. And I think this will just work. If I just refresh and I say, I want to see friends fiduciary. Oh yeah. Pacific yearly. Ben Lomond. All right, so that's it, we wired it up. Now, the next thing is we're going to have a lot of authors, so we're going to get into a little bit of JavaScript land now. And I didn't do much prep on this one. Yeah, Morphbreed, what are your thoughts on that JavaScript question? So is there like just a native way to do that? That's kind of the main thing. I think jQuery or by type, by, uh, I could add a class, but if I could just select them by tag name, that'd be cool. I think that was it. Select them by tag name. But then Okay, and then what do you do with it? How do you set a callback or a uh, uh, the event handler? Just chaining. Will that work?
Yeah, that works for the select. Good, good stuff. That's what I do. I submit the whole form. This form submit. So yeah. Oh. Instead of doing the select, I could select the form. Is that kind of what you're leaning into? Le uh, hinting at? Like that? Yeah, if I give it a name. Facet form. Where's my... I'll use this uh, camel case. Okay. Ah, so this is document create selector by ID now. And then. Ah, crap. You can tell how thorough my knowledge is of these. Yeah, I'm invited. Thanks. <laughs> uh, what did I call it again? Facet form. Facet form. Uh, what? Oh, we got to read. Fresh the browser. No. Haven't saved the changes and refresh the browser. Let's disable that. There we go. All right, then can you just chain it on? What do you do with it then? How do I put in an event? Handler there. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I put them all in one form so that it would just be one get request. Sign, and I think it's just going to be on change, right? That's where I'm at. What is this target? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's imperative. The API is just, I was kind of thinking it would be more declarative. That's my ignorance. Oh, yeah. Well, but I, I'm again, um, can't I just add it to the form? Let me try it at the form. And then it 
just a callback. That's going to be a problem anyway because the this template is mattered with the event handlers. So let me do this. Save. Reload. So now my form is broken. Won't work. But now my form changed yeah so it looks like you can add it just to the form and if there's any change it picks it up so that's cool then thing that is I should have experimented with this is that the API whoops cancel that enter yes this submit I'll save this and reload it now basically and so yep I've got no anything down here and when I submit these changes that just works <clears throat> because right here So not too much JavaScript. One moment, I'm gonna meet my mic and adjust my chair. All right, let's go ahead and uh, commit these. What did I change, what did I change? So essentially,
All right, the, now a little bit of the fun part, oftentimes, is it finding new JavaScript frameworks and rewriting your work entirely in a new framework. No, just kidding. But I do want to add a little bit of um, use building enhancement here because this list potentially will grow to hundreds of items. Already it's kind of looking a little janky. So if, if anyone's got a suggestion on a JavaScript multi <laughs> select widget, when I keep making fun of JavaScript ecosystem, I think I, I see the, the viewer number drop. <laughs> it's like direct response. <gasps> I've done this search a bunch of times, but let's see what we got. In particular, if there's one that's a web component. All right, what do we got? Select menu. Not bad. Got grouping. What I'm really looking for is the one that you can uh, maybe filter. Not sure what I'm looking at here. Awesome pleat. Yeah, so I think it's actually. Out of curiosity, I do have to work with some addresses soon. How does this work? I was curious. I wonder where it's getting those recommendations from. Like Google Play Search or something? Yeah, and then I would need these other fields. We're going to have to add uh, to several of our models, particularly in the contacts. Uh, we're going to have to start adding addresses uh, for our community library these places have addresses and we're going to put them on a map okay what do you recommend for an autocomplete widget so, like a drop down slash autocomplete we're using it now. over here we're using something in our project mm. Let me select. Let's see what this one looks like. Slim select JS. No dependencies. It's about as big as view. JS. But it's a single select, which is what we need in a, in a search field, which is super cool. You know, optional multi select. Works pretty good with modern browsers. What's your opinion on uh, supporting IE? What version? This is a bigger issue, but uh, what do you recommend? 11 plus is good? Mm, let's see. Let's try it out. So you need... Uh, this whole thing. And I think we'll put it in the <sighs> I 
So we'll put it in the head. It'll block loading of the page. If I do it though. Let me see if there's a place I can put it. The base template. There's extra JS. CSS. I guess we'll load the CSS into the header. I'm not sure how reliable or trustworthy the Cloudflare CDN is. I'm not wanting to promote like violation of uh, user privacy, but I don't know. At the same time, I have to balance convenience. All right. Oops, wrong. Didn't get me that one. This is why I wanted extra. New Slim Select. See what happens. Library. Uh, things breaking? No. What the fuck? Hmm. What's going on in the console? Seems like it's not defined. All right. HTML. So 404. Well, there's a good indicator of the reliability or whatnot of the Cloudflare CDN, or at least this link to it. Okay, so let's. Where was I? Slim Select. I'll stick with it. I'll stick with Slim Select out of familiarity. <clears throat> But I, I don't have in. I don't want to. I need to download it. Damn it. This one has a big download button. It was just updated four days ago. Oh, 
This looks like it's having happening a lot. The NPM package has 2019, so quite a lot of downloads on the NPM package, says Morph Breed. Uh, the problem is, sort of, I don't want to introduce a package manager here. All right, I'm just trying to keep things simple. Tooling bloat is real, but yeah, I understand it would also help me keep up to date. So I'm, if I'm doing this, it's gonna, I'm gonna fall back behind. Uh, you know, I can do something with Bauer. It's a certainly a challenge. I mean, what do you recommend, Morph Breed? <laughs> if I do the npm install, I don't think it's gonna make it easier for me just to include it here and to use it. I just have one line of code. And honestly, this whole site, this is like all this and about 20 other lines of JavaScript and one other file. Really keeping the JavaScript to a minimum. Oh, they don't have minified. I hope they have the minified version in here. Just. Yeah, I wouldn't do a point package either. I'll have to figure out how to keep up to date. Mm, and let me think here. Where do I put these? They're static files, but I'm not sure if that's for what I'm thinking is for. My dad. Where do you put this stuff? Let me just double check here. Mm, that's different just for the development. They use NPM for development. Static, yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind using the CDN. What's that uh, decentralized CDN JavaScript? It's like um, here. It is I'm using Cloud Cloudflare. There it is. So what's up with the one that I got? Oh, it's 1.22. 
Can't you just do like latest or something? Be getting tired. This should be Link. All right, let's see what happens now. Slim select man. I did my relative style sheet. It's trying, it's trying to do it. Must be including this wrong because that works. Oh, uh, yeah, link use href not source. Thank you. Thanks, more Freed. <clears throat> yep, yeah, there we go. All right, yeah, it's working good. Uh, then the only other thing, uh, I've had this problem in the past. I don't understand, what, uh, it's something about how it interacts with Bootstrap. Uh, how did I handle this in, uh, oops, hope I didn't close something without giving up dudes, but how did I handle this in Jerry Live? Yeah, the, just the padding. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a way I did this in Jerry Life. Let me just probably remember here. Using it on the client views activity form. Oh, Seven code results. Well, in any case. So what's up with this?
really strange why it's not filling it. So. It's just right here. We'll just put our custom style. Make sure I'm targeting the right element. How are you just? Yeah. Yeah, I was just using the display down real quick to test if it. Okay, so that's going to work. What's up with this bottom one? So if I do. I don't like to be too shouty with my the styles, but okay. No, no, it's not working, dude. Uh, well, <clears throat> excuse me, one thing I can do here is just, uh, I think the problem is that the bootstrap is colliding with this slim select. <clears throat> so if I just drop that out, then I think I don't even need the, sl the styles even, let me just try that. Yeah, they're a little bit different, but... Uh, Then the other problem now becomes how to update this limb select. All this uh, I've done in Jerry Live, but I just can't remember.
so you get a reference to it. Let me just take a look at this. Seems I want to, with the author, yeah, I want to assign some select set. facet. There we go. Whew. Whew. What's going on there? I got a... Oh, man. And then there's a... Oh, I'm losing train of thought in my words, but essentially it's got a... We're looping because it's modifying the form, so we're getting that uh, on-change event over and over again. Damn, Jim. This is just not uh, not simple. Hmm. Because I set the value, yeah. I kind of have to set the value. The, yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, hmm. So, five that. And, uh, this is the only method. I wonder if there's a way to set it without uh, triggering that event. prevent default type of thing. Uh, that, I'm pretty sure you can't, which is kind of a weird thing. Did you see it in there in the API? You can't tell it. You can tell the data. CSS class, inline styles, inner HTML, show search. Close on select, show content before on change, on change. Text will be set. Yeah, it's just a limitation of the API. I've, I've encountered this before where I just, I literally needed to set it. <clears throat> on create, just like you're describing morph breed, like uh, when I instantiate the slim select, I know the value I'd like to set it to, uh, but it doesn't have an API for that. It has a method, but it, there's not a property in the configuration object, which would be ideal. Did you see one? I mean, data doesn't tell me if it's selected, right? There's no attribute for that. Can you set the value before you add the change event? Oh, that one I missed. Uh, yes, I can. Yes, <laughs> by changing the order of my code. Now the JavaScript's getting a little bit willy-nilly. Uh, 
Let's see what happens, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, refresh the page. There we go. We got it. Ben Loman Quaker Center Pacifically meeting, Friends Fiduciary. Yeah. Now I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if I should just use Slim Select for all these. Because it's pretty nice. And just to, uh, toggle the search event. Yeah, more free. That was a really great suggestion uh, to do it. after after it's kind of funny though these other ones were being set the value was being set but it wasn't triggering the uh, action whereas this one triggers the on change event. I guess when you directly set the value of the element, it doesn't trigger that on change. Hmm? Curious. All right. Reminding myself why I did it this way. Um, so if I do this, Okay, I don't want to be too crafty here, but I believe my facets have the same key. I'll close this. I'm gonna close this. The same key as the fields. So if I want, I can. do something funky. <clears throat> Bear with me. I hope I'm not going too crazy on this one, but, uh, oops, control K, control C. Uh, that doesn't know, this is JavaScript. JavaScript, I should probably move this JavaScript to another file in a minute. So, on the field, author, audience, genre, medium, time period, and topic. Those should be the IDs, author, audience, genre, medium, time period, and topic. So they'll all have slim selects. Then If facets, facets, so if there's a value for that facet, I can do call this uh, 
<laughs> all right morph breed says their girlfriend's downloading the game and they were loading icon the whole time what game what game are y'all playing So first render the widget, then if there's a value. Okay, it worked. Um Okay, so then I'll just take these bootstrap classes off. Form control. That form is out of control. Huh, didn't work. Should work. Now save you. I'll refresh. There it goes. Uh, one caveat. It might be okay if they have the search field. Kind of ridiculous, but okay. doesn't have it. These other ones have a scroller, so I think it's okay to have the, the search widget in all cases. <clears throat> Good. It's consistent that way. Does my JavaScript look horrible? <laughs> Would somebody coming to this project be able to figure things out? Will I be able to figure things out? A week from now. <laughs> cool beans. Edna and Harvey, the breakout. Download a point and click adventure. Okay, that sounds cool. <clears throat> yeah, I like those. Does that one run on Linux or is it? Uh, are you getting it on Steam or GOG? Steam games. Boy, it's not seeing my. There it is. Okay, let's clean that up. Let's just. So there's that. Okay, it's midnight. Just past midnight. 
I believe. One last thing I'll do is just maybe a small button to reset or clear. And it's basically just going to be a, a link to the, ooh, not that. To the library. So I'm not going to clear individual ones. I'll just clear all. I don't want to be too tricky. Hard coding the URL for now. should be smaller than that. Well, it's not too bad. Uh, I want to do outline to not have so much uh, attention drawn to the button, but here we go. Button secondary. of that displayed next to it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now we can do a primary since uh, I've de-emphasized it. That way it is clear that it's a button, clickable thing. Cool beans. Well, let's commit this. Wrap it up. Push those changes up there.
<laughs> well. Post facto creating the issue. But this is what we discussed last. When I got feedback from Mary, we decided that uh, on the current website, we have the author's facet as well as this like general generic search field where you can search across the um, library items just by arbitrary text string. But today I implemented this you know full site uh, cross site search. So we agreed that it's not so important to have a, a generic text input here, but the author's was good. So I just forgot to add the issue. So it closes just for to be thorough linking it all up that way we can look back and track the work against the actual commits <clears throat> all right cool beans i'll get some feedback on it but yeah, it didn't turn out to be too difficult got a few improvements on the javascript side of things getting things more freed for your perspective on on things and particularly helping uh with uh, these native, these web platform APIs, I should just I dive into those more and learn uh, proper JavaScript before I, you know, resolve myself to a jQuery or some for, uh, framework like that, former framework. And we got the um, Slim Select working pretty well too. Turned out good. All right. Well, thank you all for attending. This has been another session of this continuing live streaming series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and the Wagtail CMS. Appreciate to uh, people uh, attending this Twitch stream and participating in the chat. It's always nice to have people to hang out with and sometimes get off topic and just exploring other things. Thanks, uh, don't call me late for dinner and Morph Breed particularly. If you're watching this on YouTube, do feel free to give me a any questions or comments down below the video and I will respond to those pretty promptly. If you're interested in building your own projects or wanting to <clears throat> kind of crib some of these patterns that you see in, in this series, the code is on github.com slash western friend. We're open source and I do work on a couple of other open source projects that I may be streaming soon, but right now I'm uh, kind of focused in on this western friend website. Okay, well thanks again for Hanging out and have a great day.